Hey Warriors, Miss Adams here. I am ready for another Artastic Tuesday with you. I hope that you're well and I hope that you're healthy and I'm excited to get started. This week we've been doing um, some under the sea drawings, so I thought it would be fun to do this really cool guy, the lionfish. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of these before. You won't see these guys out like in, you know, our lakes and ponds here in Oklahoma. These are um, saltwater fish and they are super cool. He looks kind of hard, but we'll break it down just like always and draw together. Okay, so he is um, geared more towards fourth and fifth graders, but of course, any grade can sure try it with me. I promise it doesn't look, it looks a little harder than it is once we break it down together. Okay, so. We are going to go ahead and get our paper ready. You can have your paper up and down or sideways today. It doesn't really matter so much. As you can see, he's kind of roundish, and so he can really go up and down or sideways. I'm going to have mine sideways, but you do it how you want. We are going to start with his eyeball, as always, and look where his eyeball is. If you put the eyeball right in the middle of the paper, he probably won't fit, so you're going to want to scoot it over a little bit. So, we're going to start with a circle for the eye. That's all we need to do at first is a circle for the eye. And then we will go inside and make almost a dot right in the middle of that circle. Almost a dot leaving a little space of white showing for the reflection off of his eye. Now, he is, he's kind of a goofy looking fish, isn't he? He's got kind of this curved little bump over his eye and then he's got like a very sad face. It looks like he's frowning. So we're gonna start with this curved bump and then we're gonna start it on his mouth to make him look like he's frowning. So I'm gonna go right close, really close to his eye and I'm gonna make this little curve line right here. So it's just a little bump over his eye and it kind of slants down. So I'm just gonna make that little bump curve line over his eye slanting down. And then it just curves forward just a smidge, kind of makes it look like he's got lips sticking out. We're gonna curve it forward just a smidge, not too far. And then we're gonna make that face and it kind of starts to curve down. And look, I'm gonna stop it about under the eye, somewhere around there. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna slant it down and it's gonna curve down. And it's gonna stop about the end of the eye, somewhere around there. Then we're gonna double that line for his bottom lip, okay? so. Not at the very end, but down just a little ways. I'm just going to double it really, really skinny next to it. Okay, so it's very skinny. Now, he kind of like, it kind of reminds me of catfish. He's got those little, they sort of look like real thick whiskers coming off of his face. So we're going to start with one of these whiskers kind of hanging down. So I'm going to look not at the end of this line, but go up a little ways. And I'm just going to make sort of a wavy line that comes down for however long you want that whisker to be. Now my lip doesn't touch this whisker, so I need to make mine just a little bit longer. Yours might already touch, don't worry about it, but mine didn't, so I'm gonna make mine a little bit longer to touch. And then I'm gonna make it pointy at the bottom and it's gonna go wavy back up and see how it's pointy at the bottom and then it gets a little thicker right there at the top. So I'm just gonna kind of wavy it back up and let it get a little thicker. Then right next to it, there's a smaller one. So right next to this little whisker hanging down, I'm gonna go ahead and make another smaller one down. Same thing. Back up and notice how it gets wider at the top. I'm gonna stop and jump over and make his face a little bit longer. See how you can see that line stopping and jumping over? So I've got his face started here. I'm gonna stop, jump over the whisker, stop, jump over the whisker, and just show that his mouth is a little bit longer. And then when you get to the second whisker, you don't see his mouth anymore. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer still, just this bottom line. Look, this bottom line for his mouth, I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer, just that bottom line, not his mouth line that we started with, okay? Now, we are gonna show this part right here. So I'm gonna make a curve line really close to this back shorter whisker. And again, I don't know that they're called whiskers. I call them whiskers. I'm not sure what they're actually called. They're of course not whiskers like your cat has or your dog has, um, but they sort of remind me of those catfish whiskers. So we're gonna go ahead and make a curve line that comes up from this, this whisker right here. We're gonna make it curve up a little ways and stop. And then there's some detail in here that we can add. 
Um, so if you would like to, you can just, they're just like rows of little curved lines. And what's so cool, guys, about this lionfish is that he is obviously covered in cool details and designs and patterns that we'll talk about in a minute. So if you make something that you don't love, it'll be really, really easy to cover it up with some stripes or with some more whiskers hanging off or with some spikes, you know? So it's really easy to kind of camouflage any details that you don't love. So back to this, I'm just gonna add, you know, two or three or four rows of just little curve lines, just little details um, right inside this area. And now we're gonna start in on his um, fins. And what's so cool about these fins, they look sort of fluttery. And as he goes through the water, it kind of looks like he's fluttering through the water. And these I read about, um, he has these for two reasons. One reason is to attract small prey. He eats, you know, teeny tiny little shrimp or teeny tiny little fish. And they see this fluttering in the water and they're like, what is going on? So they will get closer to him to see what it is that's happening. And then he gobbles them up real quick. So that's one reason. It also for bigger things that want to eat him, it is, it makes him look bigger and um, makes him look a little bit more intimidating. So like bigger fish think, eh, I want something else to eat. He looks a little bit more intimidating. So it's for, it's those two reasons that he has these cool fluttery fins. So we are just going to start towards the top of what we just made towards the top of this little area right here. And I'm going to make my first um, kind of sort of the spine of that fin. So it's just going to curve up and out and then really, really skinny back in. Okay. So we're going to make these spines first, then we'll make the fluttery part of it. Okay. So we're going to start at the top and I'm just going to make it curve up and out. So I'm following this curve and then a really, really, really skinny, spiky. I'm going to make it really skinny back in and touch. Then I'm going to do another one. It's going to kind of go up and out again. It could be longer. It could be shorter. You make it how you want. There's definitely no right or wrong to this. He looks very fluttery. So I'm just going to make it up and out. Super skinny back in super skinny. Then I can make another one. Look, this one kind of has a wave to it. You can make yours wavy or you can make it smooth. It doesn't matter. I think just for something different, I'm going to make mine wavy and then super skinny, skinny back in, double that line. Then I'm going to make it down and notice as I start to go down, notice how these are starting to get a little shorter. So I'm going to make my next one and it's just going to kind of come down. It's going to be a little shorter super skinny back in and then I'm going to make another one and just kind of fill in like I have room for gosh three more but on mine that I'm drawing up here I think I'm going to run out of room I probably won't have room for three more you make however many you you have room for doesn't matter okay so I'm just going to make it a little little smaller and then I think yeah I think I just have room for one more so I'm just going to make one more even shorter still okay so we've got those, that cool fluttery um, starting to take shape. Now we're gonna add this real fluttery part to these spines that he has. So we're gonna look at the tip and I am just gonna make just, you know, there's definitely no right or wrong to this. You just kind of make it wavy and spiky and fluttery all the way in and touch. You're gonna start at the tip and go all the way in. Same thing for the next one. There, the, Sort of the less perfect it is, the more realistic it's going to look. Don't make just perfect waves. You want some to be, you know, bigger and skinnier and, and pointier and smoother. There's definitely no right or wrong. On this, you can even switch. Notice how the wavy part is above the spine on this side. I could switch and make the wavy part above the spine on this side. I could do that the same over here. Oh. This one even sort of touches on this side. So look, I could come over here and touch on that side. There is just no way you can get it wrong. And I'm just gonna make them curve over and touch. There's just no way you can get this wrong. That's the cool thing about this fish. He looks sort of intimidating to draw, but it's really fun because you can do so many different things with it. Okay, so now we have got his, that cool fluttery fin. We've got his body kind of started, but we need to go ahead 
And we're gonna draw the shape of his body that you see tucked behind this cool fin. And then we'll add the spikes on the top and the tail and all that. But first we need to get the body going. So we started up here by his eye. Now there's a little bump that comes up again. He's got kind of this bumpy forehead. I started it here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit taller still with just another slight bump, just a slight bump. And then for his back, it really kind of curves up and it's gonna kind of stop and jump over. This is, you really have to pay attention. You're gonna stop, jump over, stop, jump over, and notice how it starts to curve down. So we're gonna have it curving up to touch the first spine, and then we're gonna start to slowly curve it down until you get, you know, to however long you want him to be. So I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna start to curve it up to touch the first spine, and then I'm gonna stop, jump over that spine, stop, jump over, and I'm starting to curve it down, curve it down, stopping and jumping over until you just get a little bit past. For his belly, you don't see nearly as much. We've got it kind of like, I need to make mine touch that very first spine. Yours might already touch, it doesn't really matter. Then I'm just gonna stop and jump over the whole thing, and I'm gonna start to curve it up just a little bit. It gets a little bit skinnier where his tail's gonna be, so it just cur starts to curve up. Now for his tail, we're gonna go ahead and make it curve up on the top, and we're gonna make it curve down on the bottom. So, starting at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and make it curve up for however tall you want his tail to be. It's not, you know, it's not a huge big tail, but it definitely, if you look, it's a good, a good size. So I wanna make sure it's not too short. It's not too short. And then we're gonna go ahead and make it curve down on the bottom. And then we're just gonna make another not perfect, not a perfect wave. We're gonna make sort of a rough, bumpy, jagged, fluttery line to touch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a rough, bumpy, not perfect line all the way down and touch. Now you can see that the, the pattern is different for his fin. So you can see this rough bumpy line right here, touching, you know, that kind of cuts from his body to his tail. So in between his tail and his body, we're just gonna make another not perfect rough bumpy line. And we're gonna add all the lines and designs and details with our fish later. Let's go ahead and just get his whole body laid out and then we'll come on here and add all the designs and patterns and everything. So we've got a good start. We've got this fluttery fin. We've got his tail. Let's go ahead and while we're back here by the tail, we're gonna make these two fins for um, on the bottom and on the top. And again, you just have to kind of look and make sure that you stop and jump over, um, you know, what you've already drawn. So close to the tail, really, really close to where the tail starts. I'm gonna start with just kind of a short little curve line. And then you're gonna decide how wide you want this tail, this fin right here. And so I'm gonna, I think I want mine like over here a little bit. I'm just gonna make it a little bit taller. Look, this line is taller than the short line. And then again, just a rough, bumpy, fluttery line to touch. We're just connecting. On the bottom, same thing. We're gonna do a short little line by that tail. And we're gonna make it a little bit wider, decide how wide you want it, make it a little bit longer. Look, on this one, on this one, I had to stop and jump over. I had to draw, you know, coming, it looks like it's coming off of that fluttery fin, but in fact, um, you know, it just shows that it comes over a little bit and it's partially hidden behind that fluttery fin. So you might need to make it behind that fin. This one's different. So we're, um, my, I didn't have to do that. And then we're just gonna make it touch. And now we're gonna go ahead and make the spikes on his back. Now these spikes on his back are actually, they have a venom to them. So um, if you come along and you touch a lionfish, you can get pricked and there is some venom in it. Luckily, there's never been a recorded case of somebody dying from their venom, but it can make you sick. It can make you like throw up and stuff. So, but it's real, it's not too serious. And you know what, all you have to do, just in case you ever get stung by a lionfish, you just pour hot water on it, on the area, and that deactivates the venom. Who knew? 
So we're gonna go ahead and make those spikes coming off the top of his back, those venomous spikes. And of course, that's a deterrent for um, an animal that wants to eat him for lunch. They're not gonna mess with them with those spikes, right? So and if you'll notice, they start off pretty shorter and then they get longer and longer and longer and then they kind of start to go short again. So we're gonna start, you know, kind of by his head, somewhere back here, and I'm gonna make my first spike, and I'm just gonna make a curve line that comes up. Same thing that we did over here, we're just gonna make it really, really skinny back down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another spike, maybe a little bit longer, make it up, really skinny back down. And another spike up, a little bit longer still, real skinny back down and we can just go ahead and fill those in kind of in the towards the middle they'd be sort of the longest oh and look I might even have to I could even make mine right off the page if you don't have too much um, room at the top of your page just draw it right off no big deal because I want mine a little longer so I just made mine draw right off the page and then I'm going to start to make them get a little shorter again And if you need to stop and jump over the fins that you already have, you can, of course, do that. And look, the kind of the less perfect, like I said earlier, the less perfect your lines are, really the more natural it's going to look, the more realistic it's going to look. And I'm just going to stop and jump over until I get to this fin right here that we just drew. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to stop when we get to that fin. And now we're gonna add that fluttery part, that real pretty sort of wavy, not perfect bumpy lines coming down on each, on one side. And that's the cool thing about animals like this. Like I said, the less perfect it is, the more realistic it is. They can sort of run into each other. And we're just gonna fill that in with those fluttery lines. Now, oh, before I forget. So we have his whiskers here that we started with. He's got even more sort of whiskers coming off the front. So kind of above his eye, there's a couple whiskers. And you can make one or two or three or a hundred, however many you want, coming out of his eye. Coming by his mouth, there's a few whiskers. And Kind of looks like he's got a little beard hanging down from his chin. So you're just going to sort of fill in some more detail with his face. However, however many whiskers you want going on is fine. Then we're going to go ahead and let's start with the this these little fins right here and the um, his tail fin so that we do these kind of stripes and circles and then we'll come on with these cool tiger stripes. So we are going to go ahead and it's excellent camouflage she's covered in this really cool sort of almost zebra like pattern and of course it's great camouflage it's also like i said earlier it attracts um some smaller prey that he wants to eat for lunch they're like oh what is that in the water and they'll come over get close to him and he'll gobble them up he is a really good eater i had no idea first of all they, there's several different types of lionfish and some can be like two inches long and some can be 15 inches long, but all lionfish eat a ton. Their stomach can get 30 times bigger than what it normally is. And they can eat something that is 50% bigger than what they are. So he can eat something, if you look at 50% of his body, he can eat something this big when he's only this big. So isn't that cool? So we're gonna go ahead and add some of those cool designs that are used, you know, of course in nature for different reasons. We're gonna add the stripes on these fins right here by his tail. So just come in here and I'm just gonna make some curve lines, stopping and jumping over if I need to. Just fill that all in, this little fin here. Do the same thing on the bottom. We're just gonna fill it all in not perfect whatsoever. Same thing on the fin. Now watch, I'm gonna follow the curve lines that I already have. So if I have a curve line coming up at the top of the tail, I'm gonna follow that curve. On the bottom of the tail, I'm gonna follow that curve. 
and just sort of follow what you already have. And then look, as it gets to the middle, it's gonna get sort of more straight. So that's kind of the key is you wanna follow the, the curves that you already have instead of making them all go one way. They really follow the shape of his tail. He even, so, I mean, we've already got a lot going on. He even has more going on. He's got little circles, these sort of little skinny circles here and there. There's no rhyme or reason. All lionfishes, you know, their patterns are different. So you definitely can't get it wrong. Just add a few little skinny smush circles here and there. And on these little fins as well, you're just gonna add little skinny smush circles in between those stripes. And there's definitely no pattern or anything. It's kind of random. Then, guys, we're almost done with this fabulous fish. We're gonna go ahead and add sort of this cool zebra type pattern on his body. I drew mine in a little bit skinnier pin so it's not so confusing um, just to look at him. But you can um, definitely, you could switch pins if you wanted to. You could switch colors if you wanted to. Um, but you're just gonna go ahead and add some really random stripes. We don't want perfectly perfect straight line stripes all over them. They kind of are just sort of rough and bumpy and some are smoother and some are really rough and bumpy. Some are, are real skinny, like I can make a real skinny stripe and I can make really wide fat stripes. And you just come on here and just add stripes. Same thing on his fins, those fluttery parts. Of, oh, this is a good tip. Leave the spikes um, plain. Don't try to do tiny little stripes on the spikes on both his back and on his fin. Remember those real pointy where we drew it real skinny next to each other. Don't do stripes on those just to make it to give us a little bit of difference in, um, you know, we'll still, we'll see a lot of stripes and that'll just give people's eyes a minute to rest when they um, see those stripes being plain. But we're just gonna go ahead and make stripes on those fluttery parts, on his uh, spikes on his back, the fluttery parts on his cool fins. And you want bumpy, rough, not perfect at all stripes. And that is really, gonna make him look more realistic than having perfect stripes. So, I won't take up any more time doing that. You can do that on your own, but don't forget to do all the fluttery parts up here and all the fluttery parts on that fin. Now, for background, oh, he also definitely has stripes on these bigger, um, the bigger whiskers right here. You definitely wanna add some rough bumpy stripes on those as well. Not so much the skinnier ones, but these, I, I looked, and all the pictures that I saw, he definitely had stripes on those whiskers as well. Okay, so now, for a background, your fish might be really, really big on the paper. He kind of gets big, and that's, that is no problem. For background, you can keep it really simple. Maybe you want to just show, like, a few bubbles, because, of course, we don't need a horizon line in the background for this animal, since he's not on land right? But you could show some bubbles in the water. If you want to keep things real simple, you could show, you know, some seaweed underneath him just kind of coming up, just peeking up off your paper. You could definitely add something like that. Or you could add, you know, if you want to show that he's closer to the bottom of the ocean, instead of um, just showing the tip top of seaweed, you could definitely show, you know, some rocks or something in the bottom. But you don't have to do a whole lot, a whole lot of background probably because he's so cool and so detailed and fun to look at without a lot going on, right? So you're going to want to finish doing your stripes, add at least a few bubbles or something maybe, and then you've got a lionfish. And I am proud of you because he's, like I said, he's kind of intimidating to look at, but I cannot wait to see what you guys did. So make sure that when you're done, make sure you have your adult at home um, post a picture on our Facebook page. I would love to see your awesome lionfish and all the details that you add. So I love you. I hope that you're safe. I hope you're well. And I will see you next week for Art Tastic Tuesday. Love you.